and welcome back to Watch Us Tonight. Thank you for joining me far and wide. This is our premiere program and we are back with a buyer's guide to dive watches. I'm your host Tim Masso and we are discussing the most popular category of luxury watch. And these are my favorite dive watches available in 2019. A veritable buyer's guide at every price point. Speaking of which, there's no better place to buy your watches, including dive watches, than the watchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell. Especially when you want to sell, we pay cash, we pay fast, we make it easy, we make it fun. And before we jump headlong into the program, some shameless self-promotion, I'm posting on Instagram. It's my new thing. And I'm posting all video reviews, 60 second reviews. You can binge watch my Instagram account. Help me to hit 50k followers in 2k19. Open another window and follow me on Instagram. Viewer wrist shots, I asked you answer, jumping straight in with Matt F, debuting the first ever Grunefeld on the show. A Remontoire 8 second beautiful piece with a Vunalade and dial and of course that is part of the component tree of Grunefeld. You can get a custom Kari Voodalainen Kompleminen Kadra dial. Nicely done. Kenneth M is right in the spirit of spring with his Breitling Super Ocean chronograph coordinating with a lovely sleeve. And Doug Y of California goes the watches and wheels route with his 1965 Mustang and Patek 5054. Glenn Z joins us from Fort Manuel in Malta with his Rolex GMT Master II and that is Manuel Island in the background. Nicely framed. Send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to see your analog on my digital. Joining the box, we got friends from everywhere. I can see Marco joining us from Italy. Firenze, the home of Panerai. We've got BKAR 421, Dustin Van Patten, Vegas Milgoss in his white dial. Edward Ledden of Sweden, Marco Trulai from Toronto this time. BS is in the box, my own sunglasses, of course, Brick Lane, Paul SG, and we've got Aaron Edgerton from Brisbane, Australia. Nolan Reed from Atlanta and Dave Taylor from Southampton, England. Dave Taylor, an old friend from the Watch You Want days. Thank you, Dave. Good to see you, man. All right, jumping right in. We have a main feature, and what a main feature. The meat of the market, my favorite dive watches of summer 2019. There is one lifelong memory that I associate with the arrival of summer and it's water. As a kid on Long Island, I rode my family ute out to the beaches of Montauk, and later on, on my bicycle, I made that ride from Manhattan. The sight of sailboats, generally other people's sailboats, back in the water was a sure sign of summer's imminent return as surely as the return of the migratory birds, and through my first years in the watch industry, the annual Watch You Want Miami Beach cleanup was an annual ritual right on the cusp of summer, and in a place where it's always summer, I can tell you it's still special when spring starts. When I think of fun by the water, I think of dive watches. Among luxury watches, only pilot's watches can approach the ability of divers to evoke adventure and translate that feeling to wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Even if you're just heading out to the pool on a July day, watch the fireworks because dive watches prov provide that emotional link to the mystery of the deep, the danger of the wild, and the thrill of going where man's technology and physiology are all that stands between him and peril. Therefore, just as important, modern divers can go elsewhere, and they don't stop at the water's edge. They go anywhere you go, they match with anything you wear, and they can be your only watch if need be. That Hulk can easily be not just the only Rolex you own, but the only fine watch, period. No watch style is more capable. Finally, the dive watch class is a rare subset of luxury watches that is a great leveler. Unlimited budgets and complexity confer no real advantages here. Beyond a certain price point, you're not getting more fun, more value, or more capability. And virtually all of the leading dive watches on the market today are below $15,000, most substantially below $15,000. That's right, the 5015 starts at 15000 So here with my favorite dive watches for you to wear in the summer of 2019, the Rolex no date Submariner. First with a bullet. This is the 114060. Launched in 2012, that really only accounts for the current reference no date sub. In reality, this is the closest living relative of the original Submariner launched in 1953. I've got my Explorer Dial 6200 Big Crown queued up. To Rolex purists, Submariners don't have dates, and there is technically no such thing as a no date. There are Submariners per Rolex, and then there are Submariner dates, and they are not the same thing. There is no no date, and he agrees, by the way. A connoisseur of all things no date, but more importantly to me, so does he. 
That's our own Jason Main, a 114060 owner. And in the chat box live tonight, he's the co-host of our Thursday program with Josh, a connoisseur of subs. He wears his without a date. Rolex itself is clear about this. Let's go full screen for a second. You've got your Submariner. And then you've got your Submariner date. And boom. Rolex's own terminology, there is no such thing as a no date. What's the same? Almost everything. 40 millimeter case, 300 meter rating, ceramic bezel insert, the same unidirectional dive bezel, the same mechanical spec, save the date, the same bracelet, the dive clasp that you'll find on the sub date, you'll find on the no date. And these Submariners offer the same diving capability. Even better, you will save $1,050 by going with the more traditional Rolex sub. In this case, less is more money in your pocket. Jumping straight in, what if you want to save even more money without surrendering capability? Well, I've got a great answer. Go Bucherer. Carl F. Bucherer, Petravi Scuba Tech, one of the unsung heroes of the dive watch segment. I've mentioned this watch before as a leading value, and nothing has changed except perhaps the number available in the market. It's a buyer's market. And as a result, you're going to love this 2013 launch that has not aged a day since Basel back in 13. 13.5 millimeters thick, it remains quite slim for a watch of its capability, and the 44.5 millimeter size makes sense in the context of a no-holds-barred, legible day or night diving tool. Max visibility and superb bloom deliver a stellar diving companion here. Feature content is simply stunning. The clasp features a fold-out dive extension, but also that push-button incremental slider. You do get both right here. 500 meter water resistance and a helium escape valve, solidly more than you'll get on the sub, and of course a sub, no helium escape valve, you gotta step up to a sea dweller to match pace with the Bucherer. The automatic SW200 is a workmanlike caliber, but it's COSC certified and five position regulated, and the dive bezel features industry leading feel. The detent is chunky and vocal and crisp. It looks and feels awesome. Everything about this watch suggests a $10,000 timepiece. Case finish is distinctive and beautiful, and the dial features a manta motif that is echoed on the matching case back. So this is a lovely piece, art artistically designed. The side of the case features vertical satin, not longitudinal, and the lugs have a wonderful stepped out sculptural beauty. It's the tangible quality that compels me to endorse this watch. On the wrist, this is the only watch and bracelet combination that feels eyes closed, unarguably as solid as what you get from Rolex. Strap or bracelet options can be chosen, but trust me, get the bracelet and thank me later. It's even fixed to the lugs with screws, no spring bars here. These sell for a reasonable six. 6700 on the bracelet, but they sell for an almost insane four and a half to five thousand dollars pre-owned. That's a great value, and you're getting a ton of watch. Eyes closed, this thing is a diving bell. If this were a smaller watch, Rolex would really have something to worry about. Jump into our chat box. I can see Paul S. joining us from the UK. I can see we've got quite a few friends. Alex N. from Oxford. We've got right here, bump, 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 bump. Tim Masso's sunglasses saying a, sh a sub should be a no date. Date belongs on a GMT and an Explorer 2 Captain Z joining in. Abdul from the Black Forest. And I could see Brick Lane saying the Hulk is still my favorite Rolex diver. Marco saying he's a big fan of large bezels. And Matt Foster saying I like that Petravi. Good weekend watch. You better believe it. And the price is right. Jason Main joining us in the box. Okay. Separate watch. Different topic. Different brand. But out of the blue comes the black. And boy, did this one take my breath away. Nobody expected Omega to launch a new diver 300 meter in January, but that's exactly what they did. And thank goodness, because this is one of the first and only confirmed 2019 Omega watches. Conspicuously absent at Basel, they said nothing during the show. Only retailers have seen their watches. So this is all we've got to go by. This and the anniversary Speedmaster. So here's the thing. Less than a year after rolling out the 25th anniversary SMP Diver 300 meter, this thing dropped in January. 43.5 millimeters in black ceramic. The update arrived with a symmetrical no date dial and feel comfortable calling this one the no date because that's exactly what it is. 
Everything that is not ceramic is brushed titanium, and it's a slick and subdued two-tone look. This is unlike any other Omega watch, diver or otherwise. This is the best dive watch of 2019 so far. In terms of new divers, this one is the cream of the crop. And I can see why Omega waited nine months to roll out such a bombshell. If that thing bowed at Basel last year, it would have completely eclipsed the, less, the rest of the SMP Diver 300 meter collection. So, with a full black ceramic case and matching black rubber strap, this surprise has the wrist presence of an honest-to-god Royal Oak offshore diver, possibly even a little bit more because it's slimmer and more handsome in many ways and better balanced than the chunky offshore. A display case back remains standard equipment so you can see your 55-hour coaxial chronometer. And since you can currently only purchase this watch on some kind of a strap, there's no bracelet option yet, I recommend the Killer Factory NATO as the best way to get the most for your 8100 US dollars. And remember, as with with Rolex, you're getting a five-year warranty, and that is a huge value-added feature when buying a modern watch. Even at Omega, which is fair about its pricing and regional with its service, service time and service expense are a significant consideration. Buy a watch that won't need it for at least half a decade. And I can see Gregory W. saying, haven't seen that ceramic Omega in the wild yet, unfortunately, and neither have I. Well, Edward Ledden is saying, my first Rolex will be the Sea Dweller 4000, the late great three model year. Sea Dweller 4000, that is a good choice, Edward. Jumping into something a bit more accessible at almost one quarter the cost of this Omega, I introduce to you the Doxa Sub 1200T Project Aware 2. This is a gloriously Miami Beach look for a Doxa watch. I'm in love with that turquoise dial. A sweetheart of a diver proves you don't need to spend $10,000 to have a good time with your dive watch. The 42.7 millimeter steel case, the dive bezel, and the dial are laid out in a form that pays tribute to the pioneering 1967 Doxa a sub. So it's true to history, but this is not some sort of a retro reissue. This is really the only shape and look that Doxa makes. A turquoise dial should require no justification, and this one simply doesn't. It's a wonderful glossy lacquer effect. It features, for good measure, Proceeds from this watch that are aiding and abetting ocean cleanup, shark conservation, and trash abatement, principally ocean plastic. That's the meaning of this turquoise dial. So your purchase helps to aid a good cause. Features are impressive, and they include a 1,200 meter diving depth, a helium escape valve, a beads of rice style bracelet with a built-in dive extension, and the timepiece features an interesting no decompression scale on the unidirectional bezel that allows you to figure out how long you can stay at each depth without requiring decompression during your ascent. And that's a wonderful heritage piece that's been on the Doxa sub since the late 1960s. It also gives the watch a different look, and that's a rarity in the dive segment. In my experience, the Doxa bezel, feel, sound, and action are quite literally no qualifiers, no equals, the best in the industry. If you want something that sounds like a rifle bolt, heck, feels like a rifle bolt, sounds like a belt-fed machine gun, Dox a sub and never look back. The Beads of Rice bracelet feels shockingly substantial. It's not quite at current Rolex level, but it's 9 tenths, and that's amazing for a watch that you can buy new for $2,190 direct from Doxa. Only 300 pieces of this limited edition will be made, and Doxa is a rare brand to begin with. You don't see a whole lot of them, and it's not one of those wrist check brands that the Gen Pop checks out to see it's, if it's counterfeit or a real Rolex or to try to gauge how much it costs. Only watch enthusiasts are into Doxa, and for me that is a huge part of this watch's appeal. A set of bracelet tools actually comes with the watch. The features, the added, I love it. But the accessory strap is my choice. I would wear it with the accessory strap, put the bracelet back in the box, because that color match is perfectly. A hell of a lot of hardware for under 2200 US. Several Doxa Sub 1200T variants are available with identical spec if your dial tastes aren't as Miami Beach as mine. Jumping in the box, Charlie Ryan, checking in from Spain. I love it. David B. Hey, Tim, thanks for doing the show. It's my pleasure. It's fun. You guys make this possible, and you make it worthwhile. I always read your comments in the chat box after the show, so don't think I'm overlooking you right there. Thomas Burnett at saying, Doxa makes some great watches. Not just great watches, but great watches for the money. Heck, 
avoid the qualifier at any price. Jumping back into the box right here, we are jumping into Rolex one more time. They make so many divers and their most impressive diver, truth be told, is probably their least traditional. In the tradition of the original Deep Sea Special and the later Deep Sea Challenge, the Rolex Deep Sea Deep Blue 2018 redesign. Now this is important because the fit changes and so does the movement. Serious 2018 changes to Rolex's mightiest diver propelled this 904L steel Leviathan from curiosity to contender. Now more wrists can wear it. The big change was that the watch went from 55.7 millimeters lug to lug, including the end links, to a much more wearable 53.5 millimeters. Nominal size remains the same at 44 millimeters, but the fit changes everything dramatically. Aesthetic refinements, however, are subtle. The big change is that the lugs are narrower across. Can we go full screen with this, guys? Because it really is very, very fey. So you can see that the lug spacing across from side to side is narrower and the bracelet itself is broader. So in proportion to the lug spacing, the bracelet is broader. What you're looking at right there is red is the old watch, yellow is the new watch. And there's a much more cohesive look to the timepiece. The bracelet end link is only one millimeter wider, but it's an all new bracelet. It minimizes the pencil neck effect that you saw on the original. Inside the case, Rolex upgrades to its most modern three day power reserve caliber 3235 with the new Chronergy escapement. So if this is not an everyday watch for you, you can put it down for a day or two without it stopping. And it's the sheer capability that remains this watch's single greatest selling point. If you're into tech, this is a techies Rolex. Let's start with the basics. Tested true, the model is actually evaluated at Rolex to 125% of its rated 3,900 meter depth. The actual Gas release valve is tested. This is one purposeful timepiece that is built to do a job. Whether you use it or not, luxury is about having more than you need. The cylindrical ring lock construction remains a marvel and exclusive to this model. It is the only Rolex you're going to encounter that uses a substantial amount of titanium in its construction. Check the case back and you'll see what I mean. The deep sea clasp remains the absolute best in the business as you have the 25 millimeter flip lock fold out extension, but then you lift the lock as you see in the picture and with the bracelet still on your wrist so you won't drop it in a marine environment, you have 20 millimeters of incremental adjustment in two millimeter increments. You cannot adjust the SD43 or the sub while the watch is still on your wrist like this. You risk droppage. So you're really getting an incredible clasp. A lot of folks who own this watch don't even know that the clasp does that, and that's a real shame. It's almost too hardcore to wear, but a rich lacquer gradient dial imparts the color and the cheer that's lacking on the standard Deep Sea's drab grayscale countenance. And it's a reminder of the Deep Sea D Blues fun Hollywood powered James Cameron backstory. At $12,550, Given the tech you get, this is a reasonable surcharge over the $11,350 Sea Dweller 43. But you can see and feel when you hold the watch where the extra money went. With the traditional no Cyclops Sea Dweller dial too, it's also a little easier for many to love the Deep Blue than the dimensionally similar Sea Dweller 43 with its Cyclops. Okay, jumping into the chat box, I can see right here Brick Lane saying, if only Blancpain could downsize their case to 39 millimeters, we're getting a Blancpain. They're coming up. And I can see here, Soutat is saying that this deep sea is a watch for people with very large wrists. It certainly still is, though it's wearable on my tiny wrist. The style is always going to be oversized. And we have Mohammed H joining from Lebanon. Guys, thank you so much. Blue Shirt Buddha saying he was out at Montauk a couple of weeks ago. You should visit there again, Tim. It's awesome over there. I'm already planning my 100 mile Long Island city to Montauk ride. Guys, if you want to get together and do a watches live biking group in the northeast we can put something together and make that happen but jumping down market one more time from rolex this time to oris and the aqua state clean ocean limited edition nothing deflates a beach visit more than reams of trash on the landscape and that goes double if you see dead or dying marine life amid the rubbish it's really unfortunate it's a total buzz kill and frankly it's just too common while oris has several conservation specials in the lineup this year and I was about to put the Barrier Reef 3 on this list instead, a key size difference between that 
and the Clean Ocean came to my attention. This Aquastate Clean Ocean is a 39.5 millimeter model, whereas the Barrier Reef 3 is 43.5. Advantage Clean Ocean. Now, a dive extension sits within a trigger actuated deployment clasp for a surprisingly premium dive watch experience. The bracelet is fixed to the case with screws, not spring bars, like something you would see at Blancpain. And I'll also mention that a Hansing matching ceramic bezel in turquoise nicely keys to the dial, which is a metallic turquoise, and gives this watch an explosive joie de vivre on the wrist. I love this. I love that Oris is using an explosive blue, really more turquoise that no one else is doing in the industry right now. Each watch includes a reclaimed case back that is made with reprocessed marine plastic, and that ensures that each close-up view, when you really get close to it, is unique, so each piece effectively unlike any other in the series. That's a true piece of reclaimed ocean plastic. I can't claim that buying a watch will make a big difference for conservation, and it would be naive to say so. But at least Oris has its heart in the right place. They're sending the right message. And this is a limited edition of 2,000 pieces, each for $2,300, which means that this is a DOXA level value with a fun factor to rival the big boys. A unique algae-based case comes with the watch, and yep, that's an algae box, and I applaud Oris for its minimalist packaging. You guys know as well as I do that you have no damn idea what to do with all those boxes around the house. Blancpain. I promised you'd we get them. The 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe Ceramic Blue. My heart throb. I saw my first in person recently, and I misidentified it as an ocean commitment. I apologize. But the 2013 Bathyscaphe was impressive, yet I wanted something with just a bit more soul, as that 2013 model was just too austere. I love the 5015, the traditional big, bold 50 fathoms, for its decadent appointments and peerless materials, but at 45 millimeters with a full polished case, it's a bit loud, even for me. Blancpain found a better balance of restraint and charm with the 2016 revision of the Bathyscaf, now with a satin brushed gray ceramic case, a timepiece with just as much scratch resistance as it has water resistance, and a refined satin surfacing. There's no high polish on this one. A blue bezel in ceramic nicely keys against the metallic blue sunburst dial that recalls the Blancpain Ocean Commitment series without the Ocean Commitment limited edition status. And there's no scratch credentials here, and you know how much I love ceramic watches. I'm all about them these days. Thinking about adding an Omega Gray Side of the Moon as my next watch, because frankly, I hate scratches, I hate scuffs, and I hate refinishing ceramic and do away with all three. The 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe ceramic costs $12,800, but its quasi big crown guardless profile is vintage inspired and endearing. It's also just easier to use this crown on, on, than on the standard watch. And its caliber 1315 five day automatic is a true high horology movement with finishing to match. And because on the Bathyscaphe you get a silicon hairspring, you also get a display case back that you don't get on the 5015. Same mechanical spec, same 300 meter water rating. I can no longer say that the 5015 is my favorite modern 50 Fathoms. Jumping in right here, Jason Main in the chat box. Ask all of your questions about our watches, our pricing and sales terms. He is the man with the information, the man with the numbers. I can see Turkish Meister joining us from Turkey saying that's a nice 50s style. And I can see Cold Steel Truth saying he's a big fan of the Oris Diver 65. Thomas Burnett is a fan of a bathyscaphe with a blue dial saying that is a perfect combination. Thomas, I agree with you. From high horology to low, how low? 1,000 meters. And the Zin U1, full tegmented with bracelet, and I'm going to go with the blue dial because I style like that. A 44 millimeter blue U-boat for your wrist. This is a watch built to take a beating at the beach below the waves or above. U-boat steel is both harder and more corrosion resistant than standard 316 low carbon, while matching the rust resistance of Rolex's legendary 904L steel. But even the mighty Rolex Oyster steel isn't as hard in Vickers terms as standard U-boat stahl from Zinn. Here's the thing though, Zinn takes its 2005 to present U1 and upgrades beyond the original. U-boat steel is then carbon impregnated via Zinn's tegament process, which I wear and I can endorse because I've knocked this thing against metal to no effect and again, no scratches, no scuffs, tegament is for real. 
you get it on the full watch. Previously, U1s only included Tegment on the bezel, not on the case, not on the bracelet. This watch gives you Tegment on every single metal surface. Unless you do something really stupid, this watch is going to look just as good two, three years hence as when you first bought it. Now, the superb bracelet is included for a slight upcharge, but not much. The whole watch, as you see it here, full tegment on a bracelet, is $2,600 US dollars, meaning it's over 10 grand cheaper than the Blancpain. It's going to be more durable even than the ceramic because you can't fracture tegament steel. Loom is excellent. And the Tegament bezel is a captive type, so it's fixed to the case with screws, not snapped on like an Omega, a Rolex, or a Tag bezel that can be snapped off. So this one can take a beating in more senses than one. Inside the case, 1,000 meters water resistant, a Tank Tough ETA 28242 adjusted in-house by Zinn. Again, 2600 bucks. you can't do much better. This is a blue U-boat that should be on everyone's short list for cost-effective fun on the wrist this summer. I could see right here, Mark S. saying U-boat steel is in bad taste. Why? The German Navy still operates U-boats today. It, it's not a World War II thing. Any submarine in the German Navy is going to be a U-boat, and Israel buys them too. It's a general term used in Germany for submarines, and it's now used abroad for many of the submarines that are bought in Germany and sailed under foreign flags. So jumping straight in right here, I can see some friends are saying that bum, 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 Mike Stone, Tim and Jason, great to join you all tonight. Jacob Casper saying Tegament is good stuff. Jason is a Zinn fan and a Zinn owner. Abdul is saying Zinn divers are out of this world really on another level for the price, and I agree. Speaking on another level, out of this world, you could not have set me up with a better transition. Coming attractions, the coolest dive watches you cannot yet buy. The big guns come out. Debethune DB28 GS Grand Bleu, announced at SIHH, but not shown. This is going to be the Richard Meal killer for which De Bethune fans have pined since the inception of the brand. Arriving later this year, De Bethune's first ever true dive watch is an all-out effort to bloody the nose of the RM folks. 44 millimeters, grade 5 titanium with the brand's signature variable geometry floating lugs. This watch is like nothing else above the waves or below, for that matter, as far above the waves as outer space. A rare use of center seconds on a DB28 allows your reference to hours, minutes, and seconds against what will be an internal rotating dive bezel. And the most exciting feature will be an active powered lighting system that is actually energized by a hand-wound dynamo. There will be LEDs inside the watch. The HYT H4 Metropolis uses a similar system, but De Bethune will be the first to debut this technology on a diving watch later this year. Additional innovations will include the signature triple parachute super shock protection system, a power reserve indicator for the five-day manual wind power reserve, and a 105 meter water resistance that will be the most water resistant in the De Bethune line with true high horology finish on every single surface and component. This is going to be an expensive piece, but a relative value because it's all in-house right down to the balance wheel and the hairspring. $93,500 compared that to six figures that you will pay to get a Richard Mill that uses a Valjean case, a Dubois de Praz module, and a Vauche base caliber. Advantage, De Bethune. The Moser Pioneer Diver. You asked, they answered. It's not officially a thing just yet. I took this picture while handling the prototype not yet announced at SIHH, but I can show you the photo because the prototype is making the rounds in the media. 42.8 millimeters in stainless steel with rotating bezel. This is the Moser of your dreams, the one you can wear literally anywhere. It's a Moser diver with a crisp dive bezel, and I can attest to that. 120 meter rating, HMC 200, three day automatic in house caliber with a display case back, and it's going to come on a full stainless steel bracelet with deployant clasp. Uh, that Photo, by the way, is Jan de Grief. Visit him on Atelier de Grief, credit where credit is due. For a handmade watch, 
from a brand that makes 1,200 pieces a year. The roughly $15,000 US price seems eminently reasonable, and the rumor is for the first year of this watch, at most, they're doing 50 to 60 pieces, and they will all be sold out when it finally hits retailers. Our good friend Roger Ruger took this handsome photo spread for his Dive Into Watches blog that he runs alongside his duties as the editor-in-chief of Watch Time magazine. Guys, thank you for joining me. I've got your digital, well, I've got your digital here in analog form. So bump, 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 digital and analog together. A best of both, Abdul R bids farewell to winter in Germany's Black Forest with his 1976 Seiko 5 calendar, nicely framed. Love the snowflakes for atmospheric effect. Jeremy C. showcases an imposing IWC Big Pilot Top Gun Perpetual Calendar on the road, and he suggests my guidance had some role in his choice of this watch. Thank you for trusting yours truly. Gareth Z. of the UK frames his future ride, Aston Martin Rapide, with the 2013 JLC Master Home Time Aston Martin Dual Time. JCS takes us home with one of my favorite watches of all time, the Zenith Chronomaster T Complete Calendar Chronograph, the caliber 410 40mm in stainless steel with some fine viewing in the background. Guys, thank you so much. Send, as I said, your analog to my digital at Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com and see your pieces on these pixels. Comment below, tell me what are your favorite dive watches on the market for 2019 and join me at Tim underscore Masso where the video continues when the lights go down around here. Thank you, time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.